Hello everyone. Today we can see a few ABG cases and how to interpret them. So moving on to the first question. A young man was brought to the casualty after he had met with a road traffic accident causing injury to the chest wall. His lab results show blood pH 7.2, plasma bicarbonate 26 millimoles per liter, PCO2 60 millimeters mercury. Interpret the lab data. So in these cases, first we have to see the blood pH, then the bicarbonate and the PCO2 values. We will see how to interpret them. So first we have to see the pH. So here the given pH is 7.2. So we know that normal pH ranges from 7.38 to 7.42. So it is acidic pH, right? So here there is acidosis. So that is your first impression. There is acidosis. Now we have to see whether it is respiratory or metabolic. So PCO2 is the respiratory component and bicarbonate is the metabolic component. Now we have to see its values. So given PCO2 is 60, which is high. Why? Because normal is 40 if it ranges from 35 to 45. So high PCO2. So the respiratory component is high. So which means it is respiratory acidosis. Okay. So it is a respiratory acidosis. And what about the bicarbonate? It is 26. So the normal range is from 22 to 26. So we take the average as 24. Range is from 22 to 26. So it is almost in the normal level itself. So in acute respiratory acidosis, what should be the compensation? If PCO2 is high, bicarbonate should also be increased. So we expect 1 millimole per liter increase in bicarbonate per 10, 10 mm Hg rise in PCO2. Okay, so actually we should we are expecting a bicarbonate of 28 if there was compensation. Okay, but here it is 26. So it is a case of uncompensated respiratory acidosis. So this is the stepwise uh, explanation of how to interpret the ABG. The first point is you have to check the pH, then check the respiratory component and the metabolic component that the PCO2 and the bicarbonate. So, if PCO2 is high, it is respiratory acidosis. And you have to see whether it is compensated or not. So, both should be in the same direction. If PCO2 is increased, bicarbonate should also be increased. But here, bicarbonate is in the normal level itself. So, here it is a case of uncompensated respiratory acidosis. So, what is the purpose of this compensation? In order to bring back the blood pH to the normal level. Okay. So then we will check the normal levels of ABG parameters. pH is 7.4. So ranges from 7.38 to 7.42. Bicarbonate is 24. Ranges from 22 to 26. Partial pressure of carbon dioxide. PCO2 is 40. Ranges from 35 to 45. So this is the respiratory component. And bicarbonate is a metabolic component. Okay. So if PCO2 is high. It is a case of respiratory acidosis and if bicarbonate is high, it is a case of metabolic alkalosis. Okay. Now chloride value ranges from 96 to 106 millimoles per liter. Potassium 3.5 to 5. Sodium 136 to 145. And partial pressure of oxygen is 95. Ranges from 85 to 100. So this is one chart which enables you to answer various types of acidosis. So pH is less and PCO2 is high and if bicarbonate is normal, it is a case of respiratory acidosis. If pH is increased and PCO2 is decreased and bicarbonate is normal, it is a case of respiratory alkalosis. If pH is less, so pH is decreased and PCO2 is normal, bicarbonate is also decreased, it is a case of metabolic acidosis. If pH is high, PACO2 is normal and bicarbonate is increased, it is a case of metabolic alkalosis. Then if pH is decreased and PACO2 is high, bicarbonate is high, then it is respiratory acidosis with metabolic compensation. So if pH is high, PACO2 and bicarbonate both are increased, then it is a case of metabolic alkalosis with respiratory compensation. Then if pH is decreased, PSO2 is high, bicarbonate is less, it is a case of metabolic and respiratory acidosis. Then if pH is more, PSO2 is decreased, bicarbonate is increased, it is a case of metabolic and respiratory alkalosis. So moving on to the next question, 
a 60 year old man was brought in a semi conscious state the patient displayed a typical hyperventilatory breathing pattern with a sweetish order in his breath interpret abg blood ph 7.1 bicarbonate 11 millimoles per liter pco2 38 rvs 550 and rotheras test is positive so from this can you interpret it so the patient is in a semi conscious state and he has hyperventilated breathing pattern there is sweetish order in his breath that is smell of sweetish order is usually smell of acetone so that we will get in acidosis right and also here the rbc is 550 and rotheras test there is a test for ketone bodies is also positive so it is a case of diabetic ketoacidosis and blood ph is 7.1 so that means in order to interpret the abg first we have to check the ph which is 7.1 which means it is acidosis so now we have to see whether it is respiratory or metabolic acidosis so you'll see the respiratory component pco2 pco2 is 38 which is in the normal range right and what about plasma bicarbonate it is 11 so it is a case of that is bicarbonate is less so it is a case of metabolic acidosis we'll see the explanation so first we have to check the ph so ph is 7.1 normally 7.38 to 7.42 so it is acidosis now we'll check the bicarbonate and the pco2 value bicarbonate is 11 normal bicarbonate ranges from 22 to 26 and pco2 is 38 so normal pco2 is 40 ranges from 35 to 45 so it is metabolic acidosis why it is uncompensated if bicarbonate is less then pco2 should also be decreased but here it is in the normal range okay 35 to 45 is the normal range so it is a case of uncompensated metabolic acidosis the bt has just started falling if we take in the 48 value pco2 has just started falling so anyway it's a case of metabolic acidosis but the compensation is not at mid. the ph is still 7.1 so why there is compensation in order to bring back the blood pH to normal so in case of metabolic acidosis so what is metabolic acidosis there is primary deficit in the bicarbonate that is hco3 so diabetic ketoacidosis here there is a case of diabetic ketoacidosis it is a cause of metabolic acidosis and diabetic ketoacidosis usually cause high anion gap metabolic acidosis so in ketoacidosis the treatment is to give intravenous fluids insulin and potassium replacement should be given why because the body tries to conserve hydrogen ions by exchanging it with potassium so there will be decrease in potassium so we need to uh, replace potassium next question a 70 year old gentleman presented in emergency room with cardiac arrest renal function tests are normal ecg showed sine waves usd shows grade 3 bph that is benign prostatic hypertrophy with bilateral hydrouretic nephrosis interpret abg so we'll see it one by one so ph is 7.24 bicarbonate is 12 pco2 is 26 sodium 130 potassium 7.2 chloride 115 so first you check the ph ph is 7.2 which means it is a case of acidosis now we have to see whether it is metabolic or respiratory acidosis so metabolic component is bicarbonate which is 12 that is decreased and what about respiratory component pco2 it is 26 so that also is decreased if it was respiratory acidosis then pco2 should have increased so here it is a case of metabolic acidosis with compensation why because since bicarbonate is less pco2 has also decreased so both have gone in the same direction so that means it is a case of uh, metabolic acidosis with respiratory compensation so in case of metabolic acidosis if electrolyte values are given we have to check whether it is high anion gap or normal anion gap so we have to check the anion gap so that is uh, the difference between cations and anions okay so you will see the analysis if step one by one so ph is 7.24 so normal ranges from 7.35 to 7.45 so it is acidosis then bicarbonate is 12 normal ranges from 22 to 26 so it is decreased then pso2 is 26 normal ranges from 35 to 45 so that also has decreased and sodium sodium normal value is 135 to 145 so it is 130 and then potassium 7.2 that is 3.55 so there is severe hyperkalemia chloride is 115 so it is hyperchloremia 
anion gap is 10. If you define the difference between cation and anion, it is 10. Normal ranges from 12 to 16. So acidosis. So USD. So it is a case of acidosis. Now we know that USD shows BPH and hydrouretic nephrosis. And there is defective bicarbonate reabsorption. So the primary deficit is the decrease bicarbonate and decrease in pH. So it is metabolic acidosis. Then why there is hyperkalemia? Hyperkalemia that causes increased membrane excitability, ventricular arrhythmia, ventricular fibrillation. Okay, so that, that must have resulted in the cardiac arrest. So there is cardiac arrest. Then hyperchloremia in order to maintain the electrical neutrality. So it is a conclusion there is the metabolic acidosis with normal anion gap. There is normal anion gap metabolic acidosis. Then we have to see why there is such a condition. So renal tubular acidosis is one condition where there is metabolic acidosis. So type 1 renal tubular acidosis will get hypokalemia and hyperchloremic acidosis. In type 2 the potassium levels are normal and in type 4 there is hyperkalemia. So here it is a case of renal tubular acidosis type 4. But because there is metabolic acidosis and there is hyperkalemia. So, it is, so renal tubular acidosis type 4 may be the cause. Now moving on to our next question. A young mountaineer went for Himalayan trekking. At 3,600 feet above sea level, he developed breathing difficulty and was rushed to the hospital. Interpret the ABG. So blood pH 7.8, PCO2 20, bicarbonate 22, partial pressure of oxygen is 80. So the primary deficit we will see pH is 7.8, which means it is alkali compound. That is acid alkalosis. PCO2 is 20, bicarbonate is 22. So bicarbonate normal level ranges from 22 to 26. So bicarbonate is normal. So what about PCO2? PCO2 normal is 40. Here it is only 20. So it is a case of which alkalosis? Respiratory or metabolic? Yes, it is a case of respiratory alkalosis. Okay. Why? Because the respiratory component has decreased and the metabolic component is normal. And the partial pressure of oxygen is only 80 because of high altitude probability. So we are interpreting the pH. The pH is 7.8. Normal range is from 7.38 to 7.42. So there is alkalosis. Now coming to the PCO2 and the bicarbonate value. PCO2 is 20. And normal range is from normal is 40. That is range is from 35 to 45. Bicarbonate is 22. Normal range is from 22 to 26. So here there is respiratory alkalosis. So in a respiratory alkalosis, we expect 2 milliequivalent per liter decrease in bicarbonate per 10 mmHg following PCO2. So, we are actually expecting a uh, bicarbonate level of around 20, 18, right? But here it is 22. So, the compensation is not, the comment is not compensated. Then PO2 is 80. So, oxygen saturation is also reduced. So, respiratory alkalosis. So, it is a case of respiratory alkalosis. But there is a primary deficit of carbonic acid. That is PCO2 is less. Hyperventilation that will result in the washing out of carbon dioxide. The causes are high altitude as in this case. Then hyperventilation, hysteria and febrile conditions. Now moving on to a second question. Next question. The paramedics brought a 42 year old man to the emergency department after he was found lying in an alley with an empty liquor bottle nearby. His physical examination revealed blood pressure of 120 bar 80, pulse rate of 110 per minute, respiratory rate of 28 per minute, temperature of 37. So BP normal, pulse rate is high, respiratory rate is high. The patient was unresponsive, his pupils were minimally reactive to light and the results of endoscopic examination were normal. Bibasilar crackers were noted on auscultation. His deep tendon reflexes were brisk and symmetric and plantar reflexes were normal. So this history suggested ingest of some toxin because the pupils have minimally reactive light, high pulse rate, then high uh, respiratory rate. There is by basic like crackles on auscultation. So deep tendon reflexes were brisk and symmetric. The patient's lab findings were as follows. pH 7.1. PCO2 35, PO2 90, Sodium 145, Potassium 5, 
chloride 97 bicarbonate 12 so here there is case of there is acidosis we will see the interpretation one by one so first the pH, we will check the pH pH is 7.1 okay so it is a case of acidosis pCO2 is 35 normal ranges from 35 to 45 and bicarbonate is 12 normal ranges from 22 to 26 so here it is a case of metabolic acidosis why right? the bicarbonate is less pCO2 it is still in the normal range so there is metabolic acidosis sodium is 145 and potassium is 5 chloride is 97 bicarbonate is 12 so anion gap if you find the difference between cation and anions the gap is 41 that is 150 minus 97 plus 12 okay so it is 41 so there is high anion gap metabolic acidosis so metabolic acidosis we have to report it as either normal anion gap or high anion gap so here there is high anion gap because anion gap normally is around 12 to 16 so high anion gap metabolic acidosis so does the anion gap explain change in bicarbonate that is the next point we have to see see so the anion gap is 41 and bicarbonate is 12 so we have to find the delta ratio Delta ratio is the difference in the anion gap. Delta anion gap by the difference in the bicarbonate. That is, anion gap obtained is 41, normal is 12. So, 41 minus 12 divided by bicarbonate, normal is 24 and the obtained is 12. So, the if the ratio is more than 2, it means there is additional metabolic alkalosis. Okay, so that is one point. If the ratio is more than 2, then there is additional respiratory alkalosis, metabolic alkalosis. Then you have to check the PCO2 value. So PCO2, it is 35. So in metabolic acidosis, we expect PCO2 to be reduced by 1 millimeter mercury for every 1 millimeter per liter drop in bicarbonate. So here we are expecting is as 28. Okay. But the PCO2 is still high. So there is respiratory acidosis. There is additional respiratory acidosis. So the final diagnosis is it is a case of methanol poisoning with high anion gap metabolic acidosis, metabolic alkalosis and respiratory acidosis. So these are the uh, ABG uh, interpretations. Thank you all.